Welcome once again to Zombie Tactics. Today, back to a tabletop review, taking a look at the High Gear Solar Solar Pod uh, Solar Charge Up Backup Power System. I saw this at Sportsman's Warehouse, and it seemed like such a neat idea that I just had to give it a shot. So I picked one up, and I've been uh, checking it out for about the last couple of weeks. It's made by a company called High Gear. It's a solar charger backup power unit, and the idea is here that, if I can get the camera in here well enough, you're supposed to be able to charge your, your MP3 player, your cell phones, your smartphones, your, your video games. It, it works in a couple of ways. One is that you can put it in the sun, and it will charge the internal battery inside of the unit. And they recommend that you do that for eight hours. The instructions say that... Uh, should be uh, good sunlight, but it doesn't necessarily have to be absolutely direct. Or you can charge it in as little of an, as an hour by hooking it up to the USB port on your on your uh, laptop. Uh, so I was really intrigued by this. The idea is it's got a little power meter on the back, and I'll show you a more detailed unit of the cell of itself. The idea is you know you leave this in the sun all day, or you charge it up on your computer, and then it's all the way charged. And when you need it. This could charge, or at least partially charge, your cell phone, your video game, uh, your iPhone, uh, a music player, uh, maybe something like a Kindle or a Nook e-reader, anything like that, any small electronics. So I thought I'd give it a go. And sure enough, I charged this thing up from USB one day at work, and just about the same time that I got this thing charged up, lo and behold, my iPhone dies. Well, it doesn't die. It goes down to about 20% power, and it's complaining at 20%. The little battery meter on your iPhone goes red, and uh, it says, hey, I only got 20%. So I plugged this in, and sure enough, it brought the power up to about 42%. And I thought that's pretty good. I didn't expect this, a little device like this, to be able to charge the iPhone all the way from its internal backup power um, to, to full charge. But getting 20% out of it, I can say, hey, that's a few phone calls. That's using the GPS unit a little bit. That's, uh, that's some significant capability. I can do some texting with that if I didn't have power available for some other reason. If I'm out camping or you know I'm on the side of the road or something, uh, way to go. I then left it out in the sun for a while and, and did the same thing. I got made sure it got a good eight hours of light on the back porch. Same thing. Plugged it into my uh, my Nook e-reader, and it charged the Nook e-reader even more. I think it almost charged it almost all the way. Uh, so I thought, hey, cool deal. This is a neat thing. But then I began to notice a certain effect, and I'll roll in some pictures here to show you this. They say you ought to use it at least three power cycles before you're getting the full effect of the batteries and the full um, the full length of use, the full amount of power. So I made sure I went through at least three cycles of USB and at least three cycles of sun. But, and here you'll see a picture of me leaving it in the sun in my car at work where it got well over eight hours of, of, uh, of sunlight. And then sure enough, you know, you turn, turn it over on the back, and this isn't charged right now, but there's a little thing here where you press this power button and it'll tell you how much power in, is in there, and right now there's none. But I'll roll in the picture here and you can see that I test it, and yeah, it's got full power. No problem. The problem is, after a full day of being in the sun and going to get it later, I began to notice this effect. And I'll roll in this picture here. You can see in this picture, this is the same day that I took the other pictures, that it's been in the sun for a full eight hours or more. And it had shown that it was previously charged up. And here it is. The sun is actually still out. It's just not been in direct sunlight for about an hour and you'll see that the battery power has gone down to 75%. That's not good. The problem is if you leave it overnight the battery and don't use it, the battery power is going to go down to 25% or not useful at all. So for some reason, this device, the design of it, it uses a lithium-ion battery. That should allow you to um, keep a charge much, much longer than that. I went through a few more iterations of this, the same results, if not worse. So I can't recommend this device. It's not going to be useful. If you charged it all day and then you were using your phone at night and you thought, hey, I can 
use this as a backup power source, forget it. It's going to lose its power in just a few hours time of not being in direct sunlight or not being hooked up to USB. So it's practically worthless for that purpose. I suppose in a pinch, you could say, well, I'm going to charge it up right away and then I'm going to use it. Like maybe if I'm out camping or someplace where there's still cell service or I can still use whatever electronics, an MP3 player or something. Uh, but then you're going to have to use it right away. It does not charge devices directly from sunlight. You've got to charge the little internal battery and then hook it up to do it. This thing was almost 50 bucks, and for that price, I've seen other devices that I know work a lot better. So, not a good experience with the high gear um, solar pod, uh, you know, battery backup solar charging system. This one's being returned to Sportsman's uh, warehouse and uh, they always treat me well. I know they'll take it back. This gets a no-buy recommendation from Zombie Tactics. Um, hopefully we can do better with other products in the future. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.